It leaves no room for any argument whatsoever. And the majority decision, very big majority, clear majority, five to two. It's not as if it was a narrow majority, three to four or four to three, that anyone can say, well, there, there, there's some room for kind of review or anything at all. But the point I'm making is that whenever the court speaks, it has a clear and emphatic order. Even if it's a very narrow majority, that's the decision of the court. And that decision must be respected. And I'm saying that it will result in a degeneration of our society and a destruction of our democratic order for anybody at all to refuse to comply with the order of the Supreme Court. And I think that's non-negotiable. It's something that we must all respect. I have heard some um, statements by certain political actors to the effect that uh, the case ought to be withdrawn and that there ought to be negotiation and all that. I'm quite surprised because indeed, firstly, I did not hear such expression of, of um, a willingness to negotiate a law or maybe such instruction to the speaker or direct suggestion to the speaker for negotiation and all. When the speaker started embarking on this act. And I think that for me it's very important that the Supreme Court ruled upon this matter because it is something that had been um, occurring in this country. The tendency for it to occur really was there. The tendency for it to occur again was there. So it's necessary or it was necessary that the Supreme Court came to this clear conclusion and determination of the matter, the meaning of Article 97, Clause 1, Paragraphs G and H. And I think we must all respect it. I think the Speaker of Parliament himself, to start with, indicated in his address to the press last week that the case raised very legal, serious legal issues. Those were his words, serious legal issues and matters bordering on governance of the country. And first, so I must express my shock, utter shock, at this refusal to be for a process. If indeed the Speaker of Parliament himself recognized that the matter raised serious legal issues, as he said to the media last week, where else would you address legal issues but in the court of law? Where else would you have such a definitive pronouncement on, on the so-called serious legal issues that the Speaker himself recognized in his, his president than by the Supreme Court of Ghana? So as for the, the, the Speaker of Parliament, indeed, I is law-abiding, I've known for a very long time to comply. With, with the decision of the, of, of the, the Supreme Court. The, as I said, it is non-negotiable in every civilized society when an order of the court is given, no matter how highly placed or lowly placed the court is. Even if it's a magistrate's court, you have to obey until it is set, set aside. What does it relate to, to this? The American constitution itself, very thin, as we all know, yet the Supreme Court, the, that constitution has survived over 200 years. I think that, of course, there are certain um, provisions of the constitution that I Thing that ought to be amended, and I've expressed my views on it to the media. Article 78, Clause 1, which enjoins the president to appoint majority of his ministers from parliament, ought to be amended. There ought to be that flexibility. I think that certain institutions, for example, the Electoral Commission, um, NCC, and what have you, the appointment of their heads has to be with the prior approval of parliament. But another thing that it calls for a complete overhaul of the constitution, and indeed, this constitution is very strong. And, it is one constitution which even goes as far as prescribing um, consequences of a failure to carry out the Supreme Court order. So the Supreme Court order, the consequences are set out clearly in art Article 2, clauses 3, 4, and 5 of the constitution that any person to whom an order of the Supreme Court is directed shall duly carry out same. And a failure to carry out such an order, of course, has the consequences of, of, of a criminal punishment in the case of of the president will even result in the president and vice president will result in removal from office. It's an emphatic um, determination by the court on, on the matter and the Speaker of Parliament has no option but to comply. I mean, I think that we must stop giving with one hand and taking with the other. <laughs> As I said, it, it will amount to double standards and, and, and an exercise in um, a contradiction. For the Speaker of Parliament in his address to the media say that the case raises such serious legal issues and matters bordering on governance and all that and then refuse to, to take part. So this country uh, refuse to take part in the proceedings. I think in this country, we must recognize some people for, for, for who they are and what they do. This hypocrisy and, and double standards must cease. The Supreme Court is the final arbiter on all matters in the country, including an interpretation of the Constitution. Indeed, it's the only court solely sees registration to pronounce on the meaning of relevant provisions of the Constitution. And the Constitution means what the Supreme Court says it means, and nothing more. It is the same in America, and as I said, the America, United Kingdom, and all advanced democracies, that is the order that they respect. There is no way a Supreme Court would give a decision in America or United Kingdom, and then the Prime Minister, apart from expressing 
his disagreement with the, with the, with the system or the president of America, we, of course he has a freedom of expression to express his disagreement with the system, but he has no option but to comply, and they usually comply, and that is it. Some principles of law have been established well over decades. There is no principle of law argued in this matter which has not been established in this country. And indeed, if that's the case, then any case mounted which has in play those principles will be determined the same way. So I think that if there's indeed the rule of law, an element of it is, is predictability. It's not a case where a court of law will rule this way on account of the same principle of law, but rule another way on account of the same principle. So indeed, there must, must be some element of predictability. And I'm saying that in these, these principles in, that we um, contend with in this matter are old principles. There's nothing new. And for those who are saying the court is acting a certain way and all that, the same people were those who were rejoicing when the court of appeal gave a decision acquitting their, their, their leader. Their leader was acquitted by the court of appeal. They were happy with it. And to date, he's able to make all those arguments in parliament because he has been acquitted. <laughs> and I did not raise any issue with that, but to appeal. I did not say I'm not going to respect the decision of the court. I respect the decision of the court. And until the decision is set aside by a higher court, which is the Supreme Court, that decision will remain binding on all. So we must stop this hypocrisy and, and exercises in, in, in contradiction. As I said, that when the, our reaction or attitude to court rulings depends on how palatable we deem it. We cannot react to decisions based on how palatable we deem it. And that's exactly what is happening. 